Welcome to Millennial 612. I'm Andrew. I'm Laura. And I'm Pamela. So you guys, I have been counted. Oh, good. Good for you. In what? <laughs> I, I filled out the 2020 census for my household last week. Um, so Mark and I both exist in the eyes of the government and and our representatives, allegedly. Yeah. I got the census invite a few weeks ago, just a couple days after we spoke about it on air, I think. And it was dead easy. Just fill mm-hmm. it out online. Something I thought was funny, and I wasn't aware that this was going to be part of the census, when you're filling out the race section, it asks you to get specific about what you mean when you choose your racial selection. So like when I picked white, like a little pop-up box appeared underneath and it was like, please specify. And I was like, you need me to specify white? <laughs> so I went into and my... how did you specify Well, white? so I actually have had my DNA done <laughs> and mm-hmm. I know that my primary ancestry background, as if it fucking matters for these purposes is mm-hmm. british irish and norwegian so i just put that oh and it, and it let me do it i was like oh good okay i thought you were gonna like prove like how white you are like i would write <laughs> i love bruce springsteen <laughs> <laughs> um what else <laughs> what else makes me white i mean that's pretty um, white <laughs> you let you go to duncan multiple times yeah. a week you drink LaCroix. i love duncan donuts I drink LaCroix. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> By the way, thanks to everyone who attended our most recent Bay Hangout. Rex, Zach, Aubrey, Camille, Kelsey, Kim, Kira, Rosalie, Sarah, Sarah, <laughs> Sarah with an H, Sarah without an H, Sean, Graham, JY, Christina, Morgan, Nikki, Tiara, Sarah, three, Jemima, <laughs> Becky, Marie, Haley, Poe, and Kamal, as you may be able to tell, that was our biggest Bay Hangout yet. And I think it's because everybody is socially isolating. It was a good time. Thanks, everybody who came out. And we will be hosting our next coffee break. This is for everybody, whether or not you are a patron, this Wednesday from 3 to 4 p.m. And it is going to be in partnership with this other podcast called um, Mugcast. Mugglecast. That's it. So we're going to do like a joint thing, and that will be this Wednesday, 3 to 4 p.m. I don't know what they talk about over there. Mugs? Something like that. Sounds about right. What's the goal? Mug Mug shots. goal? Mug shots? Yes. Why did we team up with them? That sounds stupid. I don't know. Maybe millennials Hmm. are really into mugs. (laughs) Have to be right now. Got to get away from those single-use coffee cups. Yeah, that's true. Well, we can't even do that at Starbucks right now. That's right. That's true. (laughs) Stay home. Brew your own coffee. Yeah. So on today's show, we're not going to start with coronavirus chatter because we've done that the past few weeks. It's obviously taken over everybody's lives, but we do want to talk about how our lives have changed because of coronavirus. So we're going to talk about um, how we're entertaining ourselves and how the nation has evolved over the past couple of weeks. And later, we will talk about the latest developments concerning coronavirus and also Laura has been able to get a couple of breaks in terms of her monthly payments. So she's going to talk about that experience and tips for listeners out there who might want to do the same thing. That sounds great. Saving me a few hundred dollars for the month of April. Super helpful. That's awesome. I got an email from Wells Fargo that I'll talk about today too. Pam, tell us about what you've been reading in terms of how people have been spending time stuck at home. Yeah, so there were some new numbers that came out via Nielsen, who also are the company responsible or the company behind the TV ratings. So anytime you hear about how this season finale drew in this many viewers or how like this season premiere had like this much of a ratings boost, that all comes from Nielsen. Uh, The know how to gather that information. And one of the things that they also do is they are also able to gather information uh, on how much people are using certain devices to consume entertainment. And Mm -hmm. as you might expect, this has spiked a lot in lieu of everybody staying home. So I felt like this was interesting to bring up. But also instead of, you know, just giving you guys all of this information, it it might be just fun to bring back the number for this and Laura and Andrew can guess and see if they get any of these figures right. And then we'll all learn a little bit more about what we're all watching while we're stuck at home. Yeah, let's do it. So here's the first one. 
Among Americans, so all Americans, overall television use went up by this percentage the week of March 16th, which was up from the previous week's increase of 14%. So the previous previous, previous, increase. W- previous week's increase was 14%, was 14% not yes. total usage. Yes, exactly. So how much okay. more do you think that we consume television the following week? I'm going to say 25%. I'll say 32%. It's a little bit lower than that. It's actually 18%. But oh. I think that the fact that it, womp, it womp. jumped an extra, you know, few percentage points from 14. But so 32% in the past two weeks. Total. Yeah. So actually, I was kind of right. You I are kind of right in a roundabout way. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Let's talk about console use now. So across all age groups, console use, which includes those used to stream television, was up by this percent compared to the previous week's usage. That's definitely my household, for sure. Um, I'm going to say this was up 19%. I feel good about that. <laughs> I'll say 22%. Andrew, you're the closest. It's actually up by 35%. Oh, fuck. That's... That's because Animal Crossing came out. Yeah, in the that's past true. Week. And, th- and that's, like that that's game the takes thing a lot of time. Too is that it's like you you kind of have to think about it like this is how people are splitting up all their time. Yeah, very true. Yeah, I've I, probably already sunk a good twenty hours into that game, and it's yeah. only been a- out for about a week. I would just yeah, us too. I would just like to say yesterday I saw our island in the daylight for the first time because <laughs> we've only been playing at night, and I was like, babe, we've only seen our island at night. I want to see it in the daytime. <laughs> so we have you to log it. on during the day sunlight it's so beautiful this is like you in the real world too you don't leave the house during the day you just go out at night and you're like i wonder what it looks like when the sun is out this is the life of a vampire well speaking of animal crossing let's talk about gaming console use Uh, so for these figures they actually just focused on uh, kids and this is a bit of a two-parter so we'll tackle the first bit before we move on to the second so how much more time do you guys think kids aged 2 to 11 spent on gaming consoles I'll say this is up a lot because parents need to distract their kids with something when they're working from home. So I'm going to say like 50%. I'm going to say 30%. Andrew, you are also close this time. It's 45%. Jesus. I'm really good at knowing how long people spend looking at screens because I do it all day. I'm a pro. I'm a professional screen stare. (laughs) That makes sense for the reason I said parents need to get their kids doing something and off of them so Mm. stick a screen in front of their face i saw this firsthand like i didn't realize this just how well it works until i saw my sister raising her two kids trey and austin you stick a phone in front of these kids you put on blippy or i keep bringing up blippy uh blippy or one of these shark (laughs) videos whatever and they're just immediately infatuated and they shut up and they just (laughs) they just stare at the screen i was raised by blippy blippy (laughs) i got into blippy for anyone who doesn't know go on youtube and watch blippy it's kind of mesmerizing he just films in like phoenix or something and he's he's walking around finding easter eggs and baseball parks and shit but this guy has like a rock and roll past like uh, he he got in trouble for like kind of like me for for shitting in public but i didn't get caught (laughs) he did though wait really blippy yeah he has a dark past blippy (laughs) shedding Googling it. Oh, man. E! True Hollywood story. I want to see Seriously. that. Seriously. There we go. <laughs> Is this like the Blippi... next generation's Pee Wee Herman scandal? Blippi shot a viral video in which he poops all over his friend. <laughs> <laughs> this was before Blippi was Blippi, though. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, see, Pee Wee Herman was Pee Wee Herman when he did his <laughs> That's shit. That's fair. So. That's fair. Still loved Pee Wee's Playhouse. That was one of my favorite of shows. Of course. Uh. <laughs> Anyway, um, here's one more in the gaming category. How much more do you think teens aged 12 through 17 spent on gaming consoles? 30%. 35. It's a lot higher than that. They spent 59% more time on gaming consoles. I thought consoles. they had to be Yeah, because they're out of school. Yeah. No, they're out of school now. Yeah, but they're doing the virtual learning thing, Are right? Are they? That's fair. <laughs> this is the last one and probably one that's a little bit closer to how we consume content, especially given we were just talking about Tiger King before we started. So um, how much do you think that internet connected devices like Apple TV and Roku and stuff like that 
were used. Up by um, yes. 30%. I'm going to say 45%. Very, very close, Andrew. It's 28%. Yes. Jesus. Andrew's so good at this. What yeah. are the average numbers? Do you maybe, have those maybe in terms the, of hours? Maybe you're the average American. Um, honestly, I was looking everywhere and I couldn't find these without actually having to pay money for Nielsen's full TV report. So, oh. Yeah, but they did. Um, one of the things that I found when I was researching these numbers is that they are actually predicting that overall um, television consumption will be up by 60%. Um, over the course of the time that we all spend quarantined in our houses. And they estimated that number by looking at how TV usage spiked during natural disasters like the big snowstorm that New York City had a few years ago and also Hurricane Harvey and things like that. So I assume that when they were looking at these numbers, they weren't only looking at the ratings based on like the week before, but also based on how America has um, you know, consume content in in times of, you know, distress, basically. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's fascinating because over the past, what, five, 10 years, we've been slowly spending more time at home watching television, thanks to Netflix and just the internet in general. And now it's just skyrocketed even further. And it's brought the internet to its knees in some places. YouTube has decided that globally, they are limiting playback to uh, 720p. That's HD resolution, but not like the higher 1080p or right. 4K. You can turn it on, but but by default, they're setting it to 720 for now. Over in Europe, where internet connections are actually a lot faster, it's a problem because now people are all at home and they're streaming with those ultra fast connections and everybody's getting 4K or 1080p and it's bringing the internet to its knees. So Disney Plus, Netflix, tons of others have all downgraded their quality over there. Thank God. They didn't do that here. I think there would be an uprising if Netflix downgraded their quality here. I was watching Ozark the other night and some areas were a little blurry. It's like, what the fuck? Where's my crystal clear quality? <laughs> did you say that Disney Plus did this overall across the world? No, just Europe. Oh, just in Europe. Oh, okay. Because I was watching an older show on, on Disney Plus the other day and I was trying to figure out if the resolution was really bad because it was an old show or if it was because oh. the internet speed <laughs> was not as good. Well, probably like that. that. And tonight we were trying to stream this to YouTube like we do as an unlisted video every week, but we could not get it to work. And I've noticed over the past couple of weeks getting these streams up and running, it's been slower. But tonight I tried like six, seven times and it wouldn't at all. And as we all know, a lot of people are doing more streaming. People who didn't do streaming mm -hmm. are also doing streaming for the first time as well, just to entertain people. And everybody's on FaceTime now on Zoom. Zoom's been working great through all of this, but not everything else. Yeah, I've definitely had a couple of experiences within the last couple of weeks where my internet has hiccuped. Um, it hasn't been anything super significant, but like when we were doing the um, hangout for MuggleCast listeners a couple weeks ago, my internet kept cutting out. And oh I, yeah, I was like, oh this bitch. Yeah, Can't I she know. Just pay and for the better thing is, like, any and the thing is, I do pay for really good internet. Um, <laughs> but and and everything like anytime we're doing podcast stuff, I have a direct connection i've got the ethernet plugged in i don't risk doing any of this shit over wi-fi and it was still happening um mm -hmm. and the other night we were playing a game online with some friends of ours and you know video chatting with them so that we could see their reactions in real time and vice versa and there were some points where like the video chat got all pixelated and like froze or like mm -hmm. the game would skip really weird and i was like god damn it comcast <laughs> <laughs> I pay sixty dollars a month. What the fuck? Yeah, yeah. I kind. I mean, you know, this is this is something that nobody anticipated happening, and I think it's gonna be it's gonna be a learning lesson in so many ways. And I want to have a discussion on this show at some point about how we're gonna be prepared for the next one, mm -hmm. for the next pandemic. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but we'll do that in a few months after a million people have. <laughs> died yeah oh, after God. this pandemic's over but i was also wondering how we mainly spend what we've been spending our time doing at home and we've said this before for me and pam this is business as usual i feel like i've been working more because we've been doing more live events and some of the people who i edit for they've been doing extra podcasts and stuff like that which is fine i have no complaints about it but my point is i've just been busier than ever but like laura well, and Pam too. And anybody who's listening live, please uh, chime in in the Discord chat. 
what are you guys doing that you haven't done previously? Are you doing anything different? Any new hobbies? Any new activities? Yeah, so I just first want to echo um, your sentiment that I'm also busier than ever. Um, you know, I don't work from home normally. So moving into an exclusively work from home environment and figuring out how to translate the things that I do in my day to day into that environment has been time consuming and um, required a lot of thought and a lot of of intentional communication. Um, so that has been a lot of work on top of the fact that we are doing kind of like overtime on all the podcasts because one, we've got the time, but two, we also want to make sure that there's plenty of content out there to keep people busy. Um, so that has actually taken up a lot of my time, but I am doing things like going on more walks during the day. That's not mm. something I usually get to do because I'm usually at work. Um, so I've been taking the dog out for some nice walks, which has been kind of a, a double-edged sword because it's spring in Georgia and we are the pollen capital of the world. Everything is yellow in plant jizz right now. <laughs> <laughs> and it makes going outside, Hot. like basically anytime you come in from being outside, you're popping a Benadryl like immediately. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um but we've definitely been getting through like games and TV shows a lot faster than we usually do. Um, so we're having to kind of plan in advance what we're going to do so that we don't finish something and then find ourselves at a loss for what to do next. Yeah. I don't know if anybody else has found themselves in the same situation. Yeah, I feel Whoa. that. I think we were uh, like I was telling you guys before that like everybody else I'm watching Tiger King, but I'm trying to space it out because... You know, I, I think that it's very easy probably to go through content a lot faster. Um, and I would be walking more, but it's been raining out here. So I haven't really done that. But I did. Um, I decided I was going to teach myself to play the piano. So I've been doing mm. that. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. We have like so many instruments in this house. So I figured I might as well just pick one and come out of this with a new uh, skill. So that's great. I tried to teach myself piano a few years ago, and I actually documented it on Millennial. I found a great app that I'm forgetting now. I would love to get back into it. Oh, it, send it to app me if that, you uh, yeah. remember. Yeah. Well, it, it kind of works like Guitar Hero in that you have it up on your phone or iPad, and it's got the, the music sheet. And as you play, it's hearing the notes, and it knows whether you got it or not. So you're, you're kind of hitting them. And, you know, each note will light up green and it teaches you with popular music. So I was doing like, I think I was playing Roar from by Katy Perry for a little bit. That's the one that I still remember. Oh, nice. So people listening live have been chiming in. Shane said 24-7 Animal Crossing. Blue Smith said I bought Lego Harry Potter. John C. said I feel like I have been doing less work in quotes. Kaylee said I'm definitely working more. I'm working right now. And listening to Millennial, thanks for tuning in while you do that. <laughs> Liz Alou said more long walks in my neighborhood. And I've noticed a lot of people doing puzzles. Yeah, I see that too. There was actually a report in the Washington Post. They interviewed a company who just sells puzzles full time. That's all they do. They've been selling as many as 10,000 puzzles a day. On a normal day, they sell about 1,000 puzzles. So people are just bored at home and want to keep their minds busy. And that's great. I really love that idea because... You're not staring at a screen. You're just focusing on this one thing. So it's calming. You listen to some music, do it with a friend. It could be nice. Yeah. We've also been experimenting more with cooking because um, mm. we've adopted a pretty strict like no takeout, no carry out policy just because realistically, like <laughs> if you're trying to like truly like minimize your exposure to the outside world take out and carry out is avoiding that is a good way to do it um so we've been cooking at home exclusively and it's required us to get a little bit imaginative with our ingredients to make things not feel monotonous and we've mm -hmm. cooked some pretty good mostly crock pot meals if i'm being honest mm -hmm. uh, but they've come out really really good i've also noticed a lot of people i mentioned zoom playing jackbox over zoom like we did in yep. our most recent millennial variety show which is available now on patreon lots of digital hangouts amongst friends i have been invited to zero oh, hangouts with friends isn't this a digital hangout amongst friends yes but this is work 
That's fair. I've been invited to zero. <laughs> Just a reminder, I have no friends. That's but anyway. not true. You know what? Actually, I have plans to have a digital hangout this weekend with some folks Ooh. you know as well. Um, oh, great. So you're both invited if you would like to come. Do I like them? You do. You do. <laughs> oh, Laura, I can't make it. I'm so sorry. <laughs> you're like, mm, Andrew's social anxiety is already here. through the roof. <laughs> are, you yeah. ba- are you very busy? <laughs> I'm very busy. Yeah, Laura and I know somebody who like keeps talking about like how busy they are. I'm like, what the fuck? You're not leaving the house. How are you busy? Yeah, As we I just know. said, we were all so much more busy with work. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. But I think this person's lying. Okay, well, that's um, fair. <laughs> yeah. Any other growing trends we've seen from people? What they're doing to pass the time in this quarantine? I have definitely seen lots of puzzles, lots of Legos, lots of like fancy home cooking, like people making pastries and coffee mugs, like cooking oh, them I in did. the microwave. I tried a, a, a viral yeah. coffee trend. <laughs> did it work? Yeah, it did. <laughs> okay. What was it? It was that that one. I can't remember. I don't know how to pronounce it, but it, it's the one that's all over tiktok that's like it's got like the foamy coffee on the top and it floats over the the cold glass of milk Ooh, yeah it's really good it was good. really easy 10 out of 10 would recommend of course it came from tiktok yeah <laughs> <laughs> john said everyone is answering phone calls and texts now that's funny yep. everybody's so bored they're desperate to talk oh hello i like the phone again I, uh, my brother and I taught my mom how to join a party on PlayStation so that we could all play together. (laughs) Oh, that's great. So we played, we raced over the weekend. I think we're going to have her download Friday the 13th so that we can all play that online together. (laughs) Um, be a bunch of camp counselors and get rocked by Jason. It's going to be great. Nice. Get rocked by Jason. (laughs) So speaking of things that we're doing to keep ourselves entertained, The three of us thought that we could use this social distancing as an opportunity to catch up on some old TV that we just missed over the course of the last couple of decades, like iconic shows that the internet, all of our friends know and love and make references to. And we laugh at them pretending to understand, but we really don't. So this is (laughs) this is our opportunity to pick a show and sort of chronicle our experience experiencing this show for the first time in 2020. Um, So I'll start. I picked Buffy the Vampire Slayer. I feel like it's kind of shocking that this is not something that I was into when it was on air. I don't know. It does seem you. It does. And it it is. I watched the first couple episodes already and I was like, how did I miss this? (laughs) You consumed Twilight and launched a Twilight podcast before you watched Buffy. That's yeah. a little bizarre. I know. I know. I don't know what happened. I, I chalk it up to not really being big on TV. as mm. like I'm bigger on TV as an adult than I was as a kid. To be fair, back in the day, if you weren't around when this show was airing, like you missed it. There was no Hulu to catch up on yeah, the next day. Yeah, that's true. So. Like, I, and no I went social back media. And re-watched... Nobody Nobody raving about it. Yeah, I I mean, I went back and rewatched Buffy a a couple of years ago. Well, whenever it first got on whatever streaming platform it was on first. And there were episodes that even I had never seen before because they were the ones that I I missed during reruns or or when it was on. Yeah, well, all of Buffy is on Hulu, so that's where I'm consuming it. But um, I I was actually talking to uh, Sarah, who's a listener of the show and also a big Buffy fan. And she got really excited when she realized how little I knew about the show, because <laughs> I, I guess I was going into it completely clean, like I was a Buffy virgin and, and had not been spoiled. Um, but when I was asked what I thought the show was about, um, I noted it here. I said, it's about a teenage girl named Buffy who is a vampire slayer, and I think she has a friend called Angel. <laughs> <laughs> that, that was literally all that I knew about it. I know a little bit more now that I've seen the first couple episodes. I actually wrote a stream of consciousness reaction to the pilot episode that I want to share on social because I think it it works better in that medium. But I had a really fun time with it. It was like a time machine back to my childhood. I was mm-hmm. like, oh, my God, all these chunky highlights. And I used to wear my hair like that. And oh, snap barrettes. Like, that's just wonderful. Plus vampires. 
<laughs> it was just great. Um, so I'm going to commit to watching this. And okay. I'll be providing updates periodically on the show about where I am. So I have a question for you. Will you be watching Angel in tandem with Buffy when you get to the point where they start where kind they, of crossing over? Yeah. Uh, I guess. Like, I, I'm only two episodes in. So Angel is just sort of like, thus far, I think of, I've been calling him um, Buffy's tuxedo mask because that's what he feels like to me. <laughs> <laughs> like, he just pops up and, like, says some really vague, I love that like, reference. <laughs> kind of encouraging con- but like you don't know what he's about um so yeah i guess i he's gonna have to grow on me but i'm i'm so into the show like there's so there's so many weird things like the club that all the high schoolers are going to that like there are a bunch of adults including the school librarian who's just there <laughs> it's like why <laughs> is this happening it's great i love it it's so campy um it's joss whedon and i love his dialogue so um, this was made for me, I think. I'm very excited. Mm. Good. So I decided to watch the pilot of The West Wing. Laura has loved this show forever, mm-hmm. always raves about it, occasionally references it here on the show. Pam, did you watch The West Wing? I have, yes. The impression I got about the show before watching it was that it's a political drama by Aaron Sorkin in which everyone walks and talks fast around the White House. I know it's said in the White House. I know it follows the president and his staff. Yeah, that's actually fairly accurate. Because <laughs> just on the internet for years, I just see all these jokes about Aaron Sorkin writing this dialogue where they walk and talk really fast. And you see that on the newsroom, too, which I did watch all mm-hmm. the way through. Um, so I watched the pilot. And it's actually pretty interesting to watch because we're so used to seeing the modern White House. We unfortunately watch these media events every day from the white house and you see the big screen tvs and you know the the you know the cell phones and all that the west wing that started in 1999 and there's all these references to pagers in the pilot episode and i assume many years after that um and the small tvs it was good it was i don't think it was like the greatest pilot i don't know but I'm going to stick with it and I'm going to keep watching because I know it makes Laura and Pam very happy and oh, just like a, a better time in the political world. Who was your favorite character from the pilot? I'm curious. I knew you were going to ask that. Yeah, that of Rob course. Lowe's character. Oh, okay. I thought he was good. I mean, they're yeah. all pretty funny. And Allison Janney. Or, mm-hmm. Is that her? Yeah, Allison yeah, Janney. Yeah, CJ. CJ, yeah. She was, I love Alice and Janney in anything. And they tease you with the appearance of the president. He doesn't come in until the third act, I think. And then he kicks butt and takes yep. names. I don't, at this point, I don't feel that this is a spoiler because it's pretty evident that the president plays a role pretty majorly throughout the series. But initially, when Aaron Sorkin wrote The West Wing, his intention was for it to be more focused on the senior staff and that the president would sort of make very infrequent appearances. Mm -hmm. But Martin Sheen was just so good Mm. that it ended up becoming more all encompassing about the president and the staff. It's always interesting to hear stories like that. Mm -hmm. I think with Breaking Bad, something similar that happened was they brought either Jesse or Saul in. They were planning on killing the character off earlier, but then the character just you know, became really popular and they really loved this character on the show. So they were like, let's keep this character around. There's some great characters like that that come up in the West Wing that you can tell were intended for shorter arcs, but that they kept around because they really were Mm. just so good. So yeah, I'll be watching it also just for the nostalgia, just the 90s vibe in the White House. (laughs) It's really good. I that whole uh, and also like Lisa Edelstein is the the call girl in that episode um and the whole like line about potus like your friend potus has a funny name (laughs) Um, oh yeah right that was it was all very cute (laughs) it's Um, the president of the united states right (laughs) which i feel like now is probably a more well-known acronym but i feel like at the time it was more realistic for people not to necessarily be in the know about what that meant Mm. um yeah yeah, because like you wouldn't because you think about where would you hear that you wouldn't in the newspaper they're not going to write POTUS or on the evening news they're not Mm going to write POTUS on Twitter you write POTUS because you want to save some characters yeah exactly um but there is there is a lot of nostalgia factor with 
the West Wing. And I feel the same about Buffy. And I think Pam will also have some of this in her um, like first time watch of a popular series that started in the 90s. Yeah, so I'm cheating a little bit, and uh, but I've never seen the Matrix trilogy, which is a huge gap in my pop culture knowledge. So I'm going to do that. And I've mentioned this before on Twitter, and people are just shocked. So I feel like this is a good time to do this. But I've been told not to be too hard on it, because I guess, like, a lot of what has come after the Matrix you can see the Matrix influence in, in some other sci-fi movies. So I'm excited for that. I know embarrassingly little about what this entails. So my, um, you know, what do I think it's about little blurb is that I think it's like Tron, but with time travel. And then also I know that there's some red and blue pills, but I don't know how this comes into play. <laughs> <laughs> You'll find out. Um, so I, I've never seen the Matrix either. Really? And, yeah, I would just describe it as movie with lasers and sunglasses. <laughs> well, Tron also has I a lot know. of lasers, so you know I think yeah. we're on the same <laughs> yeah. wavelength. So there. it's like, would you say it's like Men in Black meets Tron? <laughs> sure. Yeah, that sounds okay. about right. Like like time traveling police, but with much better style. <laughs> Got you. I can't wait to see what your interpretations are. All right, good stuff. And by the way, one reason that I decided to watch The West Wing is because the whole series is available on Netflix, so it's super easy to grab. If there's anything new that you, the listener, have been doing during quarantine, please let us know. Write in millennialshow at gmail.com or use the contact form on millennialshow.com. It's time for a word from this week's sponsor, Talkspace. We all have something we want to change about ourselves, whether it's spending too much time on social media or wanting to start a new hobby. These are things we talk about a lot on this show. But if you're like me, like most people, taking action can feel impossible without the right support. Talkspace Online Therapy is the most convenient and affordable way to make lasting change in your life with the support of a licensed therapist. My favorite part about Talkspace is how I can easily fit therapy into my day. I have access to my therapist every day and they're so good at getting back to you so you could really carry a conversation with them throughout the week. Send your licensed therapist text, audio, picture, or video messages from your phone or computer whenever you need to. On your computer at work, at home, out at the park, wherever you are, you can send a message. You don't have to make appointments or deal with extra commutes. Everything happens within their secure platform, all on your schedule. Talkspace matches you with a licensed therapist based on your needs and preferences. They have thousands of licensed therapists trained in over 40 specialties. So if you have something very specific you want to work on, they will find someone who's right for you. When you get started on Talkspace, you'll be connected with someone who will help you find the right therapist, which is great. So you know you're getting the right type of therapist. And once you're matched, you can begin therapy the very same day. The bottom line is that life can be hard and Talkspace wants to give more of us the support we need at a price we can afford. As a listener of Millennial, you can get $100 off your first month on Talkspace. To match with your perfect therapist, go to Talkspace.com or download the app. Make sure to use the code M-I-L-L to get $100 off your first month and show your support for the show. That's M-I-L-L and Talkspace.com. And super apropos now that most of us uh, are stuck on our couches at home. One reason I always avoided therapy is because I just didn't feel like I had time to fit it into my week. I didn't want to go out and do that. Yeah. You know, traveling there and back could potentially add an extra hour to your day. So this has just been a perfect fit for me. Well, speaking of being at home, we do have some updates related to the coronavirus we wanted to run through quickly and just talk about um, some things that might be impacting you in some ways that you can hopefully help um, reduce some of your monthly financial burden during this time. Um, so <laughs> first off, the U.S. is number one in cases We're of coronavirus. One. Most cases ever. <laughs> We now have 136,880 reported cases. So big. <laughs> of course, this does not count uh, the high likelihood that there are many, many more unreported cases because we don't have enough fucking testing to determine all of them. And never forget that douche cake a couple months ago yep. said we have 15 cases and soon it'll be down to zero. Yep. He has been 
so misleading this entire time trying to downplay, downplay, downplay. And the problem has just got worse and worse and worse. And I cannot wait to look back on everything he has said. The Biden campaign is already using his words against him in some yeah, killer ads. Good. And that's going to keep happening. Yeah. Yeah. I can't. So I can't wait to see how this all plays out because I just want to stick it all in Republicans' faces. Like, look how he tried to mislead this country over, it'll be what, six months probably? Yeah. And it's also worth reiterating that um, the World Health Organization had offered the U.S. testing back in January and the Trump administration declined it. Um, so that is a large part of the reason that we are so behind on testing at this point. Um, and also why that curve that everybody keeps talking about how we need to flatten. It's not flattening. I will say, and this is kind of jumping ahead a little bit, but I think it's appropriate given your point, Andrew. Uh, 48% of Americans say the federal government has done a good job in preventing the spread of coronavirus. This is concerning to me um, because I'm like, how? How do people think that the federal government has done a good job here? It's Trump's base, right? You know, that's basically in line with his approval rating. Yeah, that's that's fair. But also his, you know, before this happened, his approval rating was tanking. And in the face of this, it seems like he's seeing a surge, which is frightening to me because... Um, you know, it's an election year and coronavirus really has the potential to make or break his campaign. And, you know, historically, Americans, just like with war, um, anytime Americans are faced with some kind of like external threat, they tend to rally around their current president and an incumbent president already has a pretty good chance of winning reelection. Um, mm -hmm. Just because they're they're the familiar face and people don't like changing leadership in the middle of a conflict. Um, so this this is very concerning to me in terms of how it impacts the November election. And I want to talk about this more in the months ahead, how yeah. this has all affected his chances of reelection. Yeah, I mean, definitely we won't be able to say anything definitive at this point because we're still so early in the process and so much could happen between now and November. But mm -hmm. um, for now, I'm like trying to stop myself from teetering into being like pessimistic <laughs> about yeah. all of this. Um, but yeah, just that's how I'm feeling. He shouldn't win re-election just because of how bad he's been at relaying information over the past couple months. And I mean, yeah. like the next point we wanted to bring up here is that he was kicking around this idea of uh, social distancing, of quarantine being over in most parts of the country by Easter. And he said, we're going to pack the churches by Easter. Everybody's going to get nice and close in only about two weeks from now. Yeah. And then on Sunday, he announced that social distancing guidelines will stay in place until April 30th. Yeah. And honestly, I think, you know, I honestly think April 30th is a pipe dream. If you look at any of the um, the estimates that are out there about when this is going to peak and when we're going to see um, sort of the peak of daily infections and daily deaths, that is coming near the end of April. So I, I don't see us being prepared to pack the churches or our workplaces on April 30th. I, yeah. I just don't think that that is feasible, barring some kind of uh, miraculous overhaul of the way we're doing everything right now. Mm -hmm. um, but he's been waffling on a lot of this. I mean, last week, New York City requested 40,000 ventilators for their overrun hospitals and just the crazy amount of confirmed cases that they have. And he was initially denying that request and saying he didn't believe they needed that many ventilators. And it took him seeing the carnage that is taking place in his home borough of Queens where he was raised in order to change his tune on this. It's a classic example of, you know, an inability to empathize until you feel personally impacted. And he wasn't getting along with governors. And he said on camera, if they're not nice to me, I'm not calling them back. I'm yeah. ignoring them. These are your constituents. These are Americans who yeah. you're hurting. 
because you're in some petty fight with a governor. You're not even in a fight. They're just being critical of your administration, rightly, when they're not getting help from you. I mean, grow the hell up. Yeah. This is awful. And people look at that and they're like, Trump was right to do that. I'm going to vote for him in November. What? Yeah, because they don't, he swore they don't to see protect it, this country. They don't see it like, what if it's you next time? You know what I mean? They just think, well, it's not our community. So who cares? Like, let him stick it to the man over there. But yeah, what right. happens that, when the, the fury turns on where they live, you know? Mm-hmm. And to that, I would say, you know, there were <laughs> a couple of instances of national disasters in which red states required relief from the federal government during the Obama administration. And President Obama did not play these games with those states. And they seem to very quickly forget that. Um also, you know, I'm from a red state and, you know, the governor of Georgia, uh, Governor Brian Kemp, um, he is a total like he is he is so far up Trump's ass. It is disgusting. And he's going along with this. Oh, we're only going to recommend social distancing, even though the projections and the models show that we will exceed our hospital capacity if that's all we do just because he's afraid of pissing trump off that's it that's what it comes down to um these republican governors don't have balls i can barely look at twitter anymore because there's so much coverage of what trump is saying and i just can't take it i just get angry every time i look at twitter yeah, recently. i, do the same I need thing. to really just cut it out of my life mm-hmm. because it, it's just a big source of stress for me yeah. all those clips too of like you know uh members of the press rightly so throwing yeah you know these softball questions really when you think about it at him and then trump just going off on a trade about how they're terrible people and they're working yeah. for failing publications and like not doing anything to even answer questions that that we all should be asking yeah it gets god me forbid really the media too. asks a tough question a fair question about the safety of americans right well, we've also seen this impacting the the elite amongst us. So the latest confirmed cases of famous people uh, contracting coronavirus are Prince Charles and Boris Johnson. I just had to laugh at Boris Johnson because <laughs> because he downplayed <laughs> coronavirus and yeah, no big deal. We don't have to shut the country down. Then he gets it. <laughs> yep. I hate Trump. Him. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like we were expecting that to happen to Trump and it hasn't. I won't say unfortunately, but in my head, I'm saying unfortunately. That's how I feel too, Laura, (laughs) that we know of. Yeah, I just... We'll never know. Yeah, if he got it, we would never know. Yeah, I was was thinking about that, and I had a really good point. I should have written it down. It was like a week ago now. We would know. We would find out. We would start seeing the symptoms. Oh, no, here's my point. If he had coronavirus, they wouldn't put him around other people. He wouldn't... You don't think they would? You think they would care? Yes! Of course. I, you I think, think Fauci? You think Fauci is going to stand right next to him knowing that he has coronavirus? And Fauci would know. So I think we would be able to tell. If he walked out, took the podium by himself, and then he left, and then everybody came in, that would be a tell. Yeah, especially when they brought out the Sani wipes and started wiping down the podium. <laughs> like, nothing to see here, folks. <laughs> oh my God, We're just being extra so cautious. <laughs> All right. Well, fair point. Um, Well, the House passed the $2 trillion stimulus package that we were talking about last week. um, And we just wanted to talk about what this means for all of you at home. Um, So for the vast majority of American adults, this means a $1,200 direct deposit. This was something that I thought was kind of cool. The IRS will is said to be Um, direct depositing this to your bank account or whatever payment method you had on file the last time you filed taxes. Mm -hmm. Um, And you can actually go to, I'm pulling the site up now to see the updates for when you can sign up to get the tax relief. Uh, Go to irs.gov slash coronavirus. And this will show you all the information that you need about coronavirus tax relief. Um, in this stimulus package is also included $350 billion in loans for small businesses that are struggling right now. $100 billion for hospitals. This is where I start to, to like have very like 
slanty eyes as I'm like judging this so much. Uh, and $500 billion in a fund for industries like airlines. So let me get this straight. $100 billion for hospitals, which are overwhelmed and, and needed, under-resourced and have people literally fucking like dying and erecting tents in front of and living there so that they can get medical care. They're getting $100 billion. But small businesses are getting $350 billion in loans. And airlines like or industries like airlines are getting a $500 billion fund. Are we for fucking real? We are. Power. But... Power. Corruption. Yeah. That's what happens. You could argue we need the airlines in this country. It's good for... We need it for our economy. We need it for, you know, our own personal reasons, our own business reasons. But yeah, they should not get a bailout this easily. $1,200 for individual Americans. That's good. But is that going to help in the long term? Like, I see this check as a good way to pay down a credit card. Yeah. Pay or rent to like, for a month or two. Exactly. But it's very limited in its use. Yeah. So I would just like to point out, um, what's the federal minimum wage? Nine something? No, I don't think it's that high. I thought it was like 725. Hang on. Oh, somebody said 725 in the... Okay. Yeah, a few people so assuming, assuming that the federal minimum wage is 725, we're going to do some quick math here. So 725 times 40 is 290. So that's $290 a week. 290 times four is $1,160 a month. So this stimulus check that we're all getting is effectively one month of the federal minimum wage. Yeah. I've seen a lot of <laughs> I've seen a lot of folks like yourself included, Andrew, being like, okay, like, yeah, this might help pay for a bill or it might help pay rent for one month, but like it doesn't if I'm in a hole because of this, it doesn't dig me out. And right. that's perhaps because the federal minimum wage is not enough to fucking live on. Right. Right. Yeah, exactly. So I'm just I, I see that and I'm like, okay, great. So like for for right. You know, people who are solidly middle class, this may help do things like pay rent for a month or pay off a credit card bill. But for people who aren't solidly middle class or people who are buried under massive amounts of debt, this is this is not something that makes it's not a life changing amount of money. And mm -hmm. it's even worse for people who fall below the poverty line. They're only getting like a six hundred dollar check. It's mm. like what it, in what part of America? I mean, there there are certainly parts like very, very remote parts where you can pay rent for six hundred dollars or less. But if you live in any kind of metropolitan area, that's not paying rent. Better than nothing, but not enough. Yeah. Especially when you're looking at the hundreds of billions of dollars that are being handed to uh, like the airline industry <laughs> mm -hmm. and Which i've already doesn't i've already it, seen but... reports that in some cases this could take these checks could take months to arrive and that's going to be too late for some people yeah well and that's the confusing part because we've heard conflicting reports about like physical checks being mailed out but now the irs is saying that they're direct depositing Mm -hmm. So it's like, well, if you're direct depositing, why should it take so long? Direct deposits for people who have direct deposits already set up with the IRS. That's right? fair. That's yeah, but and yeah. a lot of people still yeah. get their checks in the mail, like their returns. So. Yeah, I just did. Yeah. So I'm not I don't think I'm getting it via direct deposit, which is another thing that's shocking to me that they're going to send out these $1,200 checks during a time when people need to be socially isolating and it's going to drive people to banks to fucking deposit their checks. And guess what? Those lines are going to be that. very long because I will tell yep. you as somebody whose mother works at a bank, they're limiting the number of people that are allowed to go in there. Mm. I think it's only like two people at a time, two customers at a time. I meant to mention this earlier. If it does start to die down, coronavirus, it's just going to flare up again. Then we're going to have to act fast or we're going to get screwed again. Yep. Uh, yeah. We're just going to yeah, be in such a mess a for such a long time. Going, yeah, until the but, vaccine. But even then, they, what did they say? It's like at least two like years year away out. almost before yeah, they're I ready to start year, vaccinating best the case masses. Scenario? Yeah. I just want a haircut. <laughs> I just want a haircut. I've been staring at my hair over my ears for the, while we've been doing this. Like, it's bothering me. Are you and Pat 
like no, I don't trust cutting them. hair. Okay, no, nope. figured I'd ask. Maybe, but no, no. <laughs> okay, I think well, I think we're gonna have to. But yeah, I'm gonna cut my own hair soon, so I'll keep you guys updated on how that goes. <laughs> Yeah, oh yeah, please do. Yeah, I kind of want to video it for Patreon, but like sticking do a camera it. in my bathroom, I'm just gonna complain at Pat the whole time. Like, stop fucking this up. <laughs> so <laughs> if I will be very good, good showcase of our relationship. <laughs> anyway, so you you've had some success, Laura, yeah. getting some payments deferred. Yeah. So, um, given everything that's going on, I was thinking that it would be really it would come in super clutch right now to be able to hold on to some of the monthly payments that I normally have to make just so that I can put that money in savings and have it as emergency money, a little bit of a fluff fund to keep myself afloat. Um, so I actually got a one month break on my car loan. Um, mm-hmm. Essentially, I'm not paying my car loan in the month of April. And I also got uh, the same deal for a personal loan that I have and also my student loans. Um, For student loans, anybody who has federally held student loans should be able to reach out to their loan servicer to request an administrative forbearance in light of COVID-19. As of right now, I'm hearing that those should last for up to 60 days, but I've also seen reports that they could last as long as six months. Um, So I'm still waiting for more concrete information from my loan servicer about how long my administrative leave is going to be from paying my student loans. Mm -hmm. But doing this really allows me to save a few hundred dollars in the month of April so that I can put that money into savings and have it in case myself or somebody I love has some kind of emergency in the future, as opposed to like throwing that money at those payments. Um, I did want to give a couple of tips for this. The first one I would say is be patient and stay on the line. Um, Everyone is calling to try and get some kind of break right now. I was on the phone for almost two hours the other day with my auto loan servicer trying to get a human being on the phone so that I could request this. Um, I'm very fortunate in that I'm working from home right now. So I literally just put the phone on speaker so that I could hear when somebody picked up and I kept going about my day and doing my thing. But did you have to listen to that awful on hold music? Yeah, it was terrible (laughs) to have the elevator music going for that long. But at the end of the day, it was worth it. My car loans like $300 a month and not having to pay that in the month of April really allows me to bolster my savings a little bit. That's great. I would also say be sure to ask for the terms and conditions. Um, So a lot of places, in addition to offering to defer your payment for a month, are also offering to defer or rather uh, defer the interest accruing for that period of time so that the interest clock isn't ticking during the 30 to 31 day period where you're not paying the loan. And that's just nice to know that you're not paying additional interest for a month in which you're not paying. If they're not offering that, it could still be worth it, depending on how much your payment is every month um, and sort of what your personal financial situation is. Um, And the only other thing I would say is to be aware that this doesn't mean you're getting something for free. Um, This is temporary relief in order for you to be able to put that money away and hold on to for God knows what might come as opposed to like, oh, I have extra money to spend now. Um, So the way that I'm viewing this is like I'm I'm holding on to a few hundred dollars that I would have spent on these bills, but I'm not spending it right now. I'm literally just putting it aside um, for something that myself or somebody else might really need. Plus, you're going to have to make that particular payment at a later date yes so you're kind of just extending the period in which you're paying you're extending you're extending the the repayment period by one month right for every time you do this yeah you you're not going to school tomorrow but you will a day further into the summer you will still make that up yeah Yeah. (laughs) um i got an email from wells fargo who hypable media inc banks with they are willing to help people with their mortgages with loans but yeah it looks like a lot of banks are trying to help out right now and delay some of your payments so if you do need to do that go for it just be prepared to wait on the phone for a while and also you know just save that money for when you actually do have to make that payment in the future 
Yeah. Or, I mean, I guess you got to use it for food at this point, but you got to remember that your mortgage, your car payment, you're going to have to pay that a little later into your life. Yeah, this isn't just free money. So There's yeah. been talk of like, let's just say, let's just do no rent, no mortgages, no nothing for like a month or two. That would be cool. Because, yeah. yeah, your landlord could say, don't pay rent this month, but they've got a mortgage to pay. They've got bills to pay. So they can't just snap their finger and do that yeah exactly i haven't heard anything from my mortgage lender about not having to pay i keep checking to see like are y'all gonna do anything and they aren't Mm -hmm. saying shit and then these banks offering small business loans that's great but like i think about that from the perspective of like hypable or say the podcast like we have some money banked for situations like this so we Mm -hmm. can sleep at night knowing that if all went south we'd still have money to keep the show or website going for several months and the loans are good but you're just taking on debt then and that sucks i will say that this is a time i i took a deep breath and i was just like i am so glad that andrew is so uh like give it to me give it to me (laughs) Let's hear it. I, I'm glad that Andrew is so paranoid, uh, insistent, <laughs> insistent on v- on a very liberal amount of savings. Yeah, we, we the show saves a lot of money. And honestly, that's one of the reasons why, like, we're not freaking out right now yeah. about the show. That's- yeah, bigger <laughs> stressor for me is the website. I would not be able to sleep at night if we only had enough to pay like for the next month you Mm -hmm. know what i mean like we have money the site could be running full steam ahead for months and we'd be perfectly fine i wouldn't want to do that make no money for months and still pay everybody because that sounds like a bad business decision but we can if we need to and that's comforting yeah definitely Uh, yeah laura's like let's just take all these bonuses and i'm gonna go on a cruise i'm like bitch no (laughs) get out of here i'm like split it three ways baby (laughs) she wants to travel the world yeah go waste all this money yeah that's like half true (laughs) (laughs) so we are going to be bringing on ning who is one of our bays to talk about the life of exercising at home during all of this but first we have a quick word from one of our sponsors third love I've been wearing Third Love's bras for over a year at this point. Their bras are designed to fit you, not the other way around. They have over 80 sizes, but know that the only one that matters is yours. I stand by these bras because they are seriously the most comfortable bras I've ever worn. I was pretty amazed when I took their Fit Finder quiz online and subsequently received the best fitting bra I've ever had. They have straps that don't slip and tagless labels, so no itching. My favorite part are the lightweight, super thin memory foam cups that mold to your shape. And if you need help, they have a team of fit stylists available via chat and email dedicated to helping you find your perfect fit. And if you don't love it, Every customer has 60 days to wear it, wash it, and put it to the test. Then return it for free and Third Love will wash it and donate it to a person in need. Third Love knows there's a perfect bra for everyone. So right now they're offering our listeners 15% off your first order. Go to thirdlove.com slash millennial to find your perfect fitting bra and get 15% off your first purchase. That's thirdlove.com slash millennial for 15% off today. All right. We are now joined by one of our Bay Level Patron supporters, Ning. Hi, Ning. Hello. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes, we can. You're coming to us from Singapore, right? Yes. Hello from the future. (laughs) That's right. uh, Tuesday morning here. How many people have coronavirus now? Um, (laughs) Future teller. Over here, I think it's like 600 plus. Only 600 People? people over there in Singapore, huh? Yeah, um, we've pretty much had it under control, I would say about until maybe about a week or so ago, or maybe it was two weeks. I don't know. Time's like stretching into eternity. Yeah. Is, so, is everybody sheltering in place over there? How, is, how do you get it under control? Um, so basically what our government did like right from the start is um, if you come back from like a hot zone, uh, you have to monitor yourself or like they put you in quarantine for 14 days. So you can't leave the house for 14 days. And anytime somebody tested positive, 
they will try to track down whoever they those people have close contact with and those people get quarantined as well. So that's how we've been keeping it under control. But um, I think because the situation has gotten quite bad in a lot of places, so a lot of people have been coming back, like they've been working or studying overseas, so they come back. And I guess a lot of people have been asymptomatic. So there's been some, uh, what we call like uncontacted, like isolated spreading. So like we don't know where they got the virus from. So we've been having a lot more social distancing measures in like the last couple of weeks or so. By the way, Ning is on the other side of the fucking planet right now and her internet connection and video quality is awesome. Way to yep. go Zoom and Ning's internet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's like better quality than us, I feel. <laughs> I know. Yeah, I, I agree. think we have better quality internet here because it's like a small country and like it's easy for the government to like lay fiber optics cable everywhere. So everybody, like all our new places has like already has fiber optic connection. So mm, cool. I think that's why it's so yeah. good. And Singapore also takes climate change and environmental regulations a lot more seriously than we do here in the U.S., I feel? Uh, well, it's a bit better than the U.S., I think. I'm not mm. sure, but mm. uh, they could do better, I guess. Like, um, if you bring your own mugs or containers to a lot of food places, they still give me the, what? <laughs> no, no really? we're giving you a single-use yeah. cup. Yeah, we are giving you a, or they put it in, like, they will pour the drink to the single-use cup and then pour it into my cup. And I'm like, then what is the point? <laughs> oh, yeah, that defeats the purpose. It's ridiculous. I feel like everything we hear here talks about all of these um, sort of, like, amazing technologies that Singapore has to, like, um, sort of, like, repurpose waste into something that's environmentally friendly. But it could all just be... Who knows? I mean, from our vantage point, it could just look a lot better <laughs> than what we have. Yeah. I think the biggest accomplishment we have is we reuse like wastewater, sewage water. We have something called new water, which is basically they filter every all the waste out from like your pee and then it becomes water to drink. Wow. So that was like the big thing. So for a while, everybody was like, but I don't want to drink pee water, but they yeah, just I put wouldn't. it into our <laughs> utilities. So you know, doesn't make a difference anymore because everybody's drinking it. What? When did that happen? <laughs> was it recent? Um, or? No, it was quite a number of years ago. So at oh, least okay. 10 years, 10, 12, 15 years even ago. So, oh, could you imagine all uh, what Twitter would be like if like America switched uh, water that used to be urine? <laughs> <We'd> <laughs> all, there would words. be a revolt. <laughs> <laughs> We'd be podcasting about which, that for a month. Which is so funny because we were feeding the people of Flint lead water and nobody said shit. <laughs> <True. That's> yeah. <laughs> At least this pee water is like portable. I like that water. Yeah, there you go. So, yeah. <laughs> so yeah. we had been planning on discussing working out at home on today's episode with everybody being asked mm -hmm. to stay at home. And as luck would have it, Ning told me in our pre-interview chat that she had recently started working out. So we thought we could all talk about working out, getting started and working out at home. Um, Ning, you recently started working out in general, right? And why did you decide to do that and what pushed you to just do it? Um, actually, I started about maybe two and a half years ago. Oh, okay. So um, there wasn't really like a very big, oh, I want to lose weight or get fitter. You know, it's always been a general like, I should probably work out more <laughs> instead of sitting on my ass all day. Mm -hmm. So, And, and um, how old are you, if you don't mind my asking? I'm 33. Okay. Yes, I know I look 20. Everybody says that. So. I was just going to say that. <laughs> Zoom delay, bad internet connection. Yeah, yeah, yeah. sure. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so anyway, yeah, I started working about working out about two and a half years ago. So um, what started actually was like uh, one of my best friends, Suki. Actually, she's also a listener. Hi. <laughs> oh, cool. Yeah. Oh, hi. Yeah. So um, she went for this bar class. I don't know whether you've heard about it. It's like a ballet-based kind of workout. Mm -hmm. So she went okay. for this bar class and she said it was like quite fun. And she asked whether I would like to, you know, join her. So I went for one and I literally got hooked. I think it's like, um, because personally, I've like joined like a couple of exercise classes before. Like I've tried Pilates, I've tried yoga. What I like about bar is like, it's not like 
overly cardio based, at least at the start. Um, but it's not like slow such that like I get restless because like when I go for like yoga, it's a bit too slow for me because like I'm very restless. So like yeah, yoga is a lot about like, you know, you must relax and like, you know, go with the flow. And I'm like, yeah, okay, next. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, so I think that that class that I went was like a good mix of both. Slowly just went for more and more classes. And then before I know it, I've been going five days a week. <laughs> So, you got wow. kind of addicted. That's dedication. Yeah, I got addicted. Yes, yeah. I did. They also have like different varieties. So they also have HIIT classes, H-I-I-T. So it's a good variety, yeah. Mm-hmm. I think you talk about that a lot, Laura, right? HIIT? Yeah, I'm a big fan of HIIT. High impact interval training? Uh, I think it's high intensity interval Intensity, yeah. okay. Because yeah. you're, um, you're changing between, you're like increasing and decreasing your heart rate very quickly to sort of acclimate your body to quick changes in cardio activity. Mm, okay. Yeah. yeah. But bringing it to doing it at home, um, I keep mentioning this in recent weeks. I have this fit desk behind me and it's a stationary bike and it's got this desk top and I've been doing some editing on it. I had a hypable meeting on it earlier. Um, it's, it's just a nice space to put a laptop on. It's got a little holder for a tablet if you want. It's got armrests so it's comfortable to use when you're working um and it's got resistance bands underneath that you can pull out from under the seat and you can do some of this and some of this um (laughs) i've i've been really liking it and on amazon it's if you probably won't get it till like july at this point because i'm sure a lot of people are buying them but on amazon it was about 300 dollars or something you think about how much a gym membership costs on a monthly basis 50 60 bucks uh that the fit desk is going to pay for itself within a few months so I really love having that. I'm glad I have that right now because I I can't. The thing is, since I live above people, I don't love doing those bigger workouts where you're going to be bothering your downstairs neighbors. So one of my tips I wanted to give everybody today is if you are going to start working out at home, let your neighbors know. Don't ask permission. Don't give them the choice. But just just let them know. And that's what Pat does. He does the video workouts. Um, and he said, hey, guys, I'm going to be working out around this time every day. They're like, sure, go ahead. I'm going to come up and join you sometime, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> um, and then they know, and then they can go in the other room. So they can't, so they don't have to hear mm-hmm. Pat bouncing up and down on the floor. It's That's great that idea. you've got neighbors that are that accommodating. <laughs> yeah, it won't work out that way all the time. I, yeah. I, I, I realize that. <laughs> My workout studio, they started posting like workouts on IG Live and IG Stories. Mm-hmm. So actually I tried one yesterday uh, no complaints from the neighbor downstairs yet, so oh, we'll good. see how that goes. What at-home workouts are you doing to get HIIT accomplished? Um, the some fitness studios they have offered some exercises that you can do at home. Like they will tell you like, um, they will give you like a set of five, and then they will tell you you could do this for thirty minutes, like twenty seconds interval, twenty seconds on, ten seconds off. I guess you could adjust, and like they have a few, so you can just pick what you like. Mm-hmm. What are you doing, Laura? (laughs) I'm trying to figure out how this works for me since I can't go to the gym anymore. I've been focusing more on just body weight workouts while I've been at home um, just so that I'm at least getting like some activation. But I'm actually going to order some of like the aerobic steps because there's a lot more like HIIT that you can do with those. I did do, (laughs) it was kind of janky, but it worked. It was a good workout. I did a high knees HIIT, like where you're basically like kicking your knees up as high as you can. Um, And so I would do like a minute at like a much higher speed of doing those. And then I would do a minute at a much like lower, like more leisurely speed. And I would do that for five minutes on five minutes off basically Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. uh and i was so fucking sore (laughs) the next day but it (laughs) it it really did work very well um but yeah definitely been more like working with free weights and like trying to make use of like the bathtub to be able to do dips and things like that like just basically Mm -hmm. learning like how i can create an environment in my condo (laughs) to yeah facilitate working out yeah yeah and on this fit desk, I've been on it from anywhere from 60 to 90 minutes. It's not high intensity the whole time because I would probably die. But just knowing that I'm on there for 60 to 90 minutes pedaling, that burns a lot of calories over that period of time. So I, I feel like I'm getting a decent workout in just because of 
the length. A couple other ways I've been working out at home, one of our sponsors, OpenFit, and that is one of those video services, one of those video apps. Pat has been using this for years, absolutely loves it, gets great results. And then this, I mentioned after an episode in recent weeks, Nintendo Switch released this game called The Ring Fit Adventure. It's an adventure game that you play with this giant ring and you're constantly trying to press it in and pull it and you put it in between your legs and you squeeze it together. They have all these different types of moves. You put one controller in the big circle and then you attach another to your leg and it'll track you running in place too. These are really effective workouts and there's different workouts every day and you're playing you're playing a game while doing all these physical activities, battling these monsters and shit. So you actually, it's... I'm recommending it because it's a good way to work out without realizing that you're working out. It's like going to a dance. You're busy moving yeah. at, you know, you're, you're burning all kinds of calories, but you don't even realize it because you're having so much fun. That's awesome. Yeah, but I wonder if it's like sold out everywhere. <laughs> I, I think heard it that's is. been sold out as well. Yeah. Pam, how about you? Have you been doing anything to stay fit during this time? Yeah. I mean, I, I usually, I quit my gym a while ago. I just don't like, um, I haven't found a good gym that I enjoy out here. So usually I try and get outside to work out, whether that's, you know, doing some light jogging or maybe taking a couple of walks throughout the day and having a dog helps with that. Uh, but I do have an elliptical. I just don't really like oh. where it's placed. So now that we are stuck at home, I'm trying to figure out a good place to put that in the house so that I'm more inclined to use it because it's just like sitting there collecting dust. Mm -hmm. um, one of the things that I also really enjoy, which can be good too, if you're looking to get into HIIT is jump roping and it doesn't really seem mm -hmm. like it would be a good workout but it is and jump ropes are pretty cheap and you can usually find them anywhere or you could probably even like makeshift one if you had to so I would definitely recommend um, looking into some jump roping um, sequences if you can't find any anything else to get your hands on mm -hmm. yeah there's there's a lot of different ways you can go I noticed in the discord chat that's happening right now um, Kaylee also mentioned the company that I recommended, FitDesk. They also do an under desk stationary pedal. So you can just put this under the desk you already have and you can pedal while you're sitting here. I had one of those a while ago. I couldn't get it to fit right under my desk with the, the height of my chair and whatnot. I would be tempted to try that again because I would just sit here and slowly pedal every day. All you got to be doing is moving. Like you won't believe how many calories you will burn if you're sitting here just lightly pedaling all day. And that is not a hard workout period, but you're yeah. moving. The problem is we all sit here and we don't move. We sit on our couches at our desk in bed or doing jack shit with our body. It's pathetic. Yeah. And we need and to I do mean, something. No matter, no matter what you know, your current body composition is or what your goals are. Um, it's pretty well proven at this point that being as stationary as we are as a culture is not healthy, um, no matter what body you have. So doing something even as small as like doing some light pedaling during the day does make a difference. I used to have one of those as well. And I really did like oh. it. Um, oh, cool. It, bro it broke though. Oh, oh. <laughs> That's why I loved Michelle Obama's Let's Move campaign, because it was just about moving. Just get up and move. Dance, garden, walk, run, whatever. Just move. Oh, walk different lab, times. Walk around a lab. <laughs> yeah. yeah, exactly. Yep. I've been tempted to buy a Peloton <laughs> because if you go on their site, it says it only works out to about $58 a month if you finance it. Yeah, for and 39 months. <laughs> but you think about a gym membership, it's about the same price. Yeah. And I'm sitting on this fit desk for like 90 minutes. I could sit on the Peloton, have fun maybe for only 30, get a crazy good workout in. And then there's the leaderboard and, you know, it's a live person being like, let's go, let's go, bike harder, bike faster. I don't know. I'm not going to, but yeah. I really want to try one. I mean, it's not a terrible idea. We pay $50 a month for our membership at the gym. For two so people not, or per yeah, person? For, for two people. That's pretty um, good. Yeah, it's it's not bad at all, but we're not going right now. So it's kind of like we're trying to figure out if they'll let us pause the membership. They even told you something. my gym was like, we're going to refund you the money. No, they have not said shit. What? Motherfuckers. Yeah, I know. <laughs> so I, was I, like, I bet mm. they'll refund without you even asking because that wouldn't be right. Well, we'll see. I'm going to call. But um, we've thought about, you know, 
if this becomes a long-term situation, we're not going to keep paying $50 a month for a gym membership. So we're thinking about what alternatives there might be. And I see that Peloton actually also has an app yes. that's $12 a month. And it's a similar concept to like Open Fit or Fitness Blender where they have a bunch of workouts on there that you can use. Mm-hmm. Um, some of them are w- live and they have like body weight or like, you know, like actual like, free weights and stuff that you can use and it's apparently really good and i see they're offering a 90 day free trial of the app so i was thinking i might take that trial up and see if it's any good Mm -hmm. um because you know 12 dollars a month if you're comparing it to a 50 dollars gym membership that's actually pretty good right yeah what exactly is a peloton it's a crazy popular stationary bike yeah it's it's like a it's very hip it's it's oh, the Tesla of okay. stationary bikes. It's, <laughs> it's got a big screen and you can watch live classes and it'll keep track of your progress. And there's a leaderboard so you can like compete against friends and you can play music through it, I think. All kinds oh, of things. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Oh, wait, I have a is feeling. Is that the one with the ad? Like that went viral or something? Yes. I was just going to bring this up. Everybody was making fun of the woman in that Peloton commercial for getting the Peloton. And now the joke now yeah, is, yeah. joke's on y'all. Now y'all wish you had a Peloton because you're stuck at yeah. home. <laughs> yeah, probably. I feel like this is one of those things that'll be in a couple of years. will be like, oh, remember when Peloton was really popular? <laughs> Maybe. I don't know. I think Peloton might stick. I think it's yeah. kind of like Soul Cycle. Like Peloton, it's a... Like, Peloton's a state of mind. Right. It's a brand. <laughs> <laughs> and and this whole stationary bike, what is it called? What are those? Spin classes. Spin, spin classes yeah. are just huge right now. Mm-hmm. And people brag about them too much. But oh, I think I they are really effective and they can be fun. I did one in a gym once and it was fun. You have an instructor in the front and he's encouraging you to, you know, do as great as possible. And yeah. he's blasting music. It's a good time. Those are fun. I just always, and it's not, not a mean chuckle, but I do get a chuckle when I'm at the gym. Anytime the door to the spin class opens and you can hear the sound coming out, boom, and there's boom, boom. there's always some yeah. like teacher at the front of the class being like, "Come on, yeah. ladies!" <laughs> <laughs> my my one spin class, the guy would go like when the beat dropped, he would go, "Let's go!" Oh, oh, yeah. like, oh, that's boy, amazing. That's wild. <laughs> Let's go. I wonder if that's Too- part of the interview process to get the job. They're like, can you like pretend like you're trying Probably. to hype us up? <laughs> Probably. Yeah. yeah. You got to bring a lot of energy to the room. So uh, Ning is going to hang around for After Dark. And in AD today, we're going to talk about some family drama with Pam and a little bit of drama with me that I don't want to bring up now because it needs to go behind the paywall. So there's that. And then uh, New York has also been putting in place some safe sex recommendations in light of COVID-19. Yeah. So New York City put out some COVID-19 related safe sex recommendations, and some of them are pretty funny. So we're going (laughs) to cover those. But we also asked our patrons over at patreon.com slash millennial how COVID-19 is impacting y'all's sex lives. So we're going to share some of that information as well. Maybe some personal anecdotes on our end. (laughs) I feel bad for people who are dating right now because it's kind of like you got to hit pause on that right now, right? Yeah. Probably. You mean dating and not living together? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we've got a couple of examples of, of those for sure. Cool. We'll talk about that. So it's time for recommendations. Pam, what's yours? Oh, mine is One Day at a Time Season 4. They just came back last week. They're over on Pop TV now because Netflix canceled them too soon. But yeah. you can actually watch the first episode for free on the... um via the pop tv app or i think on their website as well and this week as well they're also simulcasting on tv land so even if you don't get pop tv you might be able to watch via tv land if you get that and i don't know how much uh longer through the season they're going to do that but hopefully throughout the whole thing because that would be great for me anyway it's a great show if you're looking for something to make you feel good you should check that out and all three seasons um that aired previously are still on netflix so you can binge that too if you haven't yet Just to stick on this TV theme for a second, I want to recommend Ozark Season 3. It just premiered on Netflix. 
Um, I really liked the first two seasons. The first half of season three was fine, but the second half of season three was really, really good. Pat and I were screaming at the TV last night. Like, there are some surprises. So definitely check that out. Also, we need to carve out like 20 minutes for this, but this fucking Tiger King show on Netflix, (laughs) the best television I've ever witnessed, is just so refreshing (laughs) because it's so absurd. It's like, unlike anything you've ever seen before. It's wild. It's it's Netflix's new making a murderer, but like 10 times more entertaining. Way better. Yeah. <laughs> We've had to pause so frequently throughout that show just to be like stare at the screen like <laughs> with our jaw like our mouth agape, like unable to find the words to describe what we're feeling as we watch this show. It's it's got everything. It's got tigers and <laughs> gay people and rednecks and uh murder everyone's freaking polygamy. weird everyone's weirder <laughs> than the next person what did mark say last night that you tweeted oh yeah he he paused at one point and he looked at me and he was like you white people sure are something i'll yeah. give you that <laughs> you know i agree with with mark <laughs> i saw you tweet that i said fine he's no longer invited to my tiger zoo get out of here you... mark i'm like halfway through the first episode and I'm like, white people are so weird. <laughs> yeah, especially Why? white people from like the South and Middle America. There is something wrong. That's One, all I can say. <laughs> One caveat, it can be a little hard to watch if you really love animals and believe in animal rights. Like there's some there's some gross stuff in there, like feeding parts of cows to the tigers. It's it could oh, yeah. it could be a little hard to watch. And of course, the docuseries is trying to say something about uh, the mistreatment of animals, but they don't really focus on that. They focus on these people. Um, and these people are wild. So you got to check it out. There's polygamy. <laughs> two two yep. polygamists in this series. It's nuts. And yeah, tiger don't cults. Even know. <laughs> like, I thought I knew, but I didn't know until I hit play. The thing that got me was when magic became a part of the story i was like what the fuck <laughs> nang here's here's a great introduction to american culture for you i'm so wow. sorry <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that is america in a nutshell yeah um i would like to recommend man of medan it is a playstation game it's by the same developers who made the game until dawn Um, What's great about this one, though, is that you can play with your friends online. And the whole premise is that you've all become stranded aboard a World War II era military ghost ship. And you're all making different decisions that have an impact on each other and the overall outcome of the story. And what's cool about it is it doesn't show you and your friends the same things all at the same time. So like you'll be playing something and talking to your friends and being like, oh, my God, did you just see this? And they won't have seen what you saw um, because the game is really trying to get you to second guess yourself and really ramp up your anxiety. Um, Mm. So it's for fans of horror games, it's really good. Um, And you can get different outcomes depending on the choices that you make. So it's something that you can play through a few times. I had a lot of fun playing this this weekend. I'm recommending a book by a Singaporean author. So it's called Erotic Stories for Punjabi Widows by Bali called Jaswal. Um, It's basically about this Punjab uh, young lady who lives, I think, in London. And then he's, she's holding a writing class, but there were some miscommunications. And the ladies who signed up, actually, they are learning, they want to learn English. So it's about the Punjab uh, community there. It's, pretty, it's quite a short read, and I will say like, it's quite interesting. And I just want to give a shout out to like some authors you might not have heard about. Yeah, I love this. I'm going to order this. This sounds great. Yeah, yep. thank you, Ning appreciate that it was great having you on thank you so much and uh, we'll continue our conversation in after dark and thank you for your support on patreon we really really appreciate it if you would like to pledge you can go to patreon.com slash millennial and you will have instant access to all kinds of benefits and we're extra appreciative of your support right now because we have lost some advertisers due to coronavirus and uh You know, yeah, I have stopped Laura from spending all of our money on cruises, but, you know, that money isn't going to sit there forever. 
because Pam is now asking for money for cruises. So, um, <laughs> no, so we really appreciate yeah, we're We're trying to go together. So if you could speed up on that, yeah. that'd be great. <laughs> we really appreciate your support because, because Patreon is what keeps the show funded. So thank you very much. And we would also love if you followed us on social media. We are Millennial Show on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. And also, if you don't already, please subscribe for free to our podcast in Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, wherever you listen to podcasts, make sure you hit that save or favorite or subscribe button. That's free to do. And that makes sure that you get every episode of Millennial when it is released Tuesday afternoon depending on whenever laura sends me the show notes because i usually finish editing before she finishes the <laughs> show notes and she still wants a cruise it's unbelievable yeah i you know what this shade is uncalled for <laughs> last week really i had this on you i had the show notes in the night that we recorded last you week you did i appreciated that, that you're was cool. welcome that was cool i actually hate <laughs> when you get the show notes done before i finish editing because i like having a break when i'm done editing but when the show notes are in then i'm like oh fuck i need to get this up Everything's so what you're ready. saying what you're saying is I can't win. Yeah, you really can't. Unless okay. you can time it somehow 30 minutes after you finish editing, but you never know when I finish editing. So how about I just save it as a draft and hit you up at noon? Because usually at that point you're getting close. That's about right. Yeah. Okay. Thank you everybody for listening. I'm Andrew. I'm Laura. I'm Pamela. And I'm Ningxi. Bye. But then it got a little crazy, it got a little hazy, and the cops said there's something wrong here. Oh, here, kitty, kitty. Oh, mama's got some treats for you. Oh, here, kitty, kitty. You can't find this taste in the zoo.